اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ یا مومنین Uh, one time I'm just going to recite the durood Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majeed So welcome to this channel friends um, On this channel basically what I do is I communicate ilm of the Quran to as many people as possible and ilm like purely of the Quran that has which has nafa and is like mufid And so today we're talking about one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is one of the most important knowledges. It's the most important knowledge is the ilm of the asma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ability, the marifat of those asma and how they display themselves in our experience. Now, before we dive into the specific name, At-Tawab rahim there's a concept that you need to understand about the asma, hus- asma al-Husna that's not well understood. This is something that you can say is from Wahadat al-Wujud, but not really. It, it's just from the Quran. What it is, is that that every single name of Allah, like Aziz al-Rahim, Ya Tawab al-Rahim, has a certain pattern with which it displays itself. Um, in our life, in our experience of life, right? So At-Tawab rahim has a certain meta structure of events, a pattern, a narrative arc, a pattern um, of sub-events in which it displays itself. Now, this is very abstract, but I have to say some abstract things. And when we get into the specifics, you'll understand how this applies. So what it is, there's a pattern in the universe, there's a structure by which Aziz rahim manifests himself in the universe. And there's a specific structure, um, which is like a meta structure by which um, At-Tawab rahim displays himself in the universe. Now you clicked on this video because you're uh, most interested, most mo- motivated to understand At-Tawab rahim So we're going to focus on that. But just one last note, on meta structure what this means is basically like a metaphor right so when i convey to you a metaphor i tell you a metaphorical story like an elephant when it's a baby you tie a rope to its leg and what happens is it can't pull it out when it's a when it's a baby it can't pull out the post that the rope is tied to but by the time it grows up it's so accustomed to not being able to pull out the rope that it no longer even tries It's learned that helplessness, right? Now, I tell that story, and we've all had experiences of disempowerment in our life or uh, having helplessness conditioned into us through something. And so when that happens, uh, when I tell that story, it triggers everyone's own particular memories that match the meta structure of the story. So in this way, there's a meta structure uh, or a metaphorical structure that, that... can be displayed in many different particular events. Now, keeping that in mind, it's really important to gain this knowledge of At-Tawab rahim which translates to the compassionately returning. To really understand this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran, you really un- need to understand this idea of metastructure or narrative arc or pattern of expression. Right now, let's get into it. And in this video, we're going to talk about the particular pattern of expression, the narrative arc that repeats itself in the six mentions of At-Tawab rahim in the Quran. So let's get started. So the first mention um, of At-Tawab rahim in the Quran is in Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns toward Adam. فَتَلَكَّ آدُمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِبَاتٍ فَتَعَبَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ So obtained Adam from his Lord words. So turn back unto him. Indeed, he is the compassionate returner. So basically, Adam al Islam has eaten the pal. He's eaten the fruit. He's guilty in his heart. He doesn't know what to do. He's fallen from grace. So... Allah seeing his guilty heart reveals some kalimat to him. Adam al Islam recites to, to, through those kalimat, through the wasila of the kalimat that have been given to him, he turns to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns to him. And Allah's returning to Adam al Islam is motivated by his rahmah, by his compassion. Excuse me. 
So the next instance, so this is a very, this is the archetypal event that you have to keep in mind. Remember, there's a meta structure, and this is the archetypal event, which uh, kind of maps onto that meta structure, what happened with Adam al Islam. But this meta structure you're going to see repeatedly, and we're going to have five instances of the meta structure that repeats itself. And I'm not going to go into detail on this event because then you'll see it as I go through uh, the rest of them. So let's go to the next one. The next story is actually of Musa al-Islam. And I'm, the translation is, uh, so obtained Adam from his Lord some words. Um, no, I'm sorry. Is of Musa al-Islam. And the translation is, and when said Musa to... Uh, for his people, O oh my people, indeed, you all have wronged yourselves, but your collective taking of the calf. So return to your master and kill yourselves. That is best for you with your maker. Then he returned unto you, meaning Allah returned to them. Indeed, he is the compassionately returning. So we see the name mentioned again. So in this event, uh, let's compare and contrast this to the event of what happened with Adam al-Islam, right? So first let's compare. Bani Israel has committed a major sin. So At-Tawabur Rahim, At and Ar, these are superlative. At-Tawabur Rahim, Tawabun Rahimun is a different name. This is At-Tawabur Rahim. So when this name is used with the superlative, what it means is this a major break has happened, meaning You've done something, or Adam did something, or Musa's people, Bani Israel, have done something that is breaking the relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and them. It, the outward action could be construed as kufr, or it can be a huge sin. Right? They've approached kufr that much. Now, it's, it depends on the heart, you know. It's not definitely kufr, but it's not it has some kufr in it, right? So there's something huge, something big. So this process, this narrative arc, this pattern of recognition, uh, this pattern we're trying to recognize uh, that occurs in the Quran, but also in our experience of life, by which it, the, the point of it is Allah reestablishes relationship with Him after something major has happened. So think about Adam al Islam. He's in Jannah. He's in the Hazur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he's there with Allah. He's speaking with Allah. Everything is provided in Jannah. The malaika are all around him. The roses smell amazing. The fruit tastes amazing. Hava is more beautiful than any woman on earth will ever be again. And, you know, there's green gardens everywhere and there's sweet water to drink. And he's, he's young, you know, he has a beautiful wife, he's young, and everything's provided for, he's not, he doesn't age, you know. In that situation, it's, he commits a sin. It's kind of like committing a sin inside the Kaaba, you know, by him eating the fruit. The, that Jannah had the Hazur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way the, the Masjid al-Haram has the Hazur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he eats the fruit in the Hazur of Allah, so it's a big sin. So it's breaking. So the same thing we're going to see here. Um, so Bani Israel commit, committed a major sin like Adam al-Islam had. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing a wasila for them to return. So basically they, they worship the calf and then Musa al-Islam receives wahi khafi and he says to them that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants is this hukum that each kabila kills those amongst you who are who committed the shirk and who haven't made toba, uh, you know, make uh, kill them. And so what happens is that that hukum is the wasila like for Adam al Islam the kalimat and the recitation of the kalimat from Allah was the wasila to make toba to return to Allah. Here the the return to Allah subhanahu wa taala is through um, it's through the 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 hukum the to kill yourselves right that hukum is the wasila to return and Adam al Islam even though he is the one who committed the sin. And him and Hawa committed the sin. His heart is sorry. So there's no other human being. Adam is the imam of all of creation. And so there's no other human being to receive the wahi. So the wahi is upon the imam of Adam, upon the heart of Adam a.s. But now, because Bani Israel is a collective and their imam is their nabi, their rasul Musa a.s., the wasila 
is sent through Musa al-Islam. This, this, the hukum to kill them is through Musa al-Islam. And that wasila is provided through Musa al-Islam, who is the imam of the, of the Jama'ah. Okay. Bani Israel returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using the wasila. Adam al-Islam recited the kalimat and used the wasila to make toba and to return. And Bani Israel also does that. They do kill themselves. They don't refuse the wasila. They accept the wasila. And they were already sorry even before Musa al-Islam came. But they accept the wasila. And then they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what happens then? Uh, then Allah returns unto Bani Israel. So the way Adam, after Adam used the wasila, Allah returned unto Adam al-Islam. So in the same way, Allah returns unto Bani Israel, right? And the the compassionate returning, uh, you know, the 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 Allah being Tawab and Rahim is manifest in this process, right? It's kind of initiated by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also. In response to someone who has a guilty heart, it's initiated by Allah, the, the wasila is sent. After they use the wasila, Allah returns unto them. So he is the compassionately returning, moved by compassion, moved by rahmah. He will return to the human being. But now let's look at some of the important differences between these two situations because they're not identical. They have the same deep narrative structure. We're going to see every mention of Tawabur Rahim has this deep narrative structure. But um, let me just... Uh, let me just mention uh, the differences really quickly. So Adam commits a major sin as an individual nafs. Bani Israel commits a major sin as a group of anfus. Right? Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides a wasila to return to Adam al-Islam through his imam, his heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides a wasila of return to Bani Israel through their imam, which is their Nabi Musa al-Islam. The wasila provided to Adam is only manifest as words or ad and um, but the wasila provided to Bani Israel was clearly a command. It was a hukum. Right? Adam basically had to recite the words, but you know Bani Israel had to do something and do something drastic. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala returns to Adam after simply reciting some words. But only returns to Bani Israel after they have enacted mass killing of their own close kin. Uh, and the same thing is that the, Allah's being Tawabur Rahim is manifest in this process. Okay, so the third ayah that mentions Surah Tawabur Rahim, um, the third ayah that mentions uh, Tawabur Rahim is Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 128. And here is a little bit different. Ibrahim al Islam is making a dua about a future event. He's making a dua about a future event. And in the dua, at the end of the dua, he praises Allah by saying he's at tawabur rahim And what you understand in the dua of the Anbiya and all the dua that are mentioned in the Quran, when someone praises Allah with a particular name at the end of the dua, what is being implied is that when what is being called for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to pass, Allah being Tawabur Rahim or whatever the particular name is will be manifest in that event when it comes to pass. And so you want to invoke him by that name because you're asking for a display of that facet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to invoke him by that name. And so that's what it means when a name is mentioned at the end of the dua. So Ibrahim al-Islam is basically making a dua and... Um, let me go into the narrative arc around that. He's making a dua that uh, from his zuriyat and with, from the zuriyat of Ismail al-Islam, that Allah appoints a Muslim nation and that he uh, forgives their sins, right? This is basically the dua that's been making and, and returns to them. Um, now keep the Bani Israel example in mind and let's look at the narrative arc for this. So the Zuriyat of Ibrahim al-Islam through Ishmael al-Islam have committed injustice against themselves. Basically they become mushrikeen, right? 
they become mushrikeen they're in the kaaba just like when israel became mushrik with the golden calf these people have also become mushrikeen they have worshipped the golden calf they have become mushrikeen and persisted for generations so the arabs you know perverted their religion and they've been going through it for centuries if not over a thousand years right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides a wasila for returning to him thereby and he sends a messenger amongst them he is the wasila rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the wasila for the them to return to him right there's a wasila who is given kalimat who's given the quran he's given ilm and hikmah and he's presenting to them and by accepting him and by following him and then by following the quran that is the wasila for them to make toba from the shirk that they have been committing um third um so they are the the salimul fitra the hunafa the muwahid the, the the people of akhlaq do employ the wasila they accept the salimul salimul fitra accept rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam become part of the mu'minin and use the wasila to make toba and return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah returns to the zuriyat of ibrahim al islam so when they make toba through the wasila that he has provided when he sees there's amongst them people you know there's people who are not submitting to the shirk they wouldn't be mushrik if there was something else he sees there's muwahid amongst them there's hunafa there are people who are trying to be upon dinul ibrahim but they don't know what it is some people become nasara some people become yahud when he sees this he sees their hearts he provides them the wasila of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of the, the best of them accept it and then allah turns to those who accept it right Okay, and in this process, again, at tawabur rahim is manifest. So you see how there's a clear pattern. There's a clear pattern by which uh, this name becomes manifest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has to do with major sins, sometimes historical, generational sin, huge sin, not small things, complete breaks. Like, you know, the Yehud committed shirk, and so did Bani Ishmael. They just became, they they made toba within, you know, a few days. But Bani Ishmael is making toba after centuries, if not thousands of years. Okay. The fourth ayah, uh, let me read the translation. Um, Except for those who return and rectify and clarify, then those will return unto them, and I am uh, I am the compassionately returning. So instead of translating this ayah, let me just go through the ark and explain what the ayah is talking about in the ark this time. The Ahle Kitab have committed a major sin. What is the major sin? That they obscure what Allah has revealed. So Allah has revealed the book, and He's revealed it to clarify for humanity, you know, everything. To clarify, but the, the people who have the book obscure the book they don't want the book to be clearly known so they're obscuring what allah has revealed so allah provides them a wasila to return uh through revelation meaning the new rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that has come in this ayah they're given a wasila of how to return what is the wasila they have to they have to make toba they have to rectify themselves uh, and then third they have to clarify what they had been obscuring so whatever they were hiding whatever they didn't want to be heard they themselves had to proactively clarify it after they've made toba to allah and rectified their character right um And this is this is where transition happens. The, the first three ayat that mention at Tawabur Rahim are talking about something like the, a historical event in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is manifest. But the last three ayat that mention at Tawabur Rahim are not only talking about a historical event or a historical instantiation, but something that's going to be true until the day of judgment. So the wasila is provided to any Ahlul Kitab until the day of judgment who who are doing this can make toba in this way their wasila will be the same and they will find allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at tawabur rahim if they engage in this in this manner the ahl kitab who have obscured the book can take the wasila then now and until the day of judgment and those who do return to allah will find him in this manner will find him, find him at tawabur rahim so we see again that that structure is there but with, with important differences that we've mentioned um, 
Okay, so instead of reading the last two ayat as separate translations, I'm just going to go through the narrative arcs and explain the ayat there. Um, just so you know the ayah number, it's a Surah Toba, Surah 9, Ayah 104. So this one is talking about the Sahaba. It is presumable that the Sahaba committed sins sometimes major. Because a tawabur rahim is used and because it always refers to a major sin, it's important to just realize that the Sahaba could also commit major sin just like Banu Ishmael did before them, Bani Israel did before them, like Adam al-Islam did before them, were human. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided a wasila for returning to him and cleansing themselves by allowing the Messenger of Allah to take the verities from them. So giving sadaqah here is the wasila. Giving sadaqah is a wasila for returning from major sins, right? They use the wasila to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, by, by allowing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to take sadqa from them, not for himself, but to take sadqa and spend it as he sees fit, not them going and giving sadqa. The purification, the wasila to the tawbah, to returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give the sadqa or allow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to take the sadqa and spend it as he, he sees fit because he's better able to do that. So the wasila for tawbah is, is that, not giving sadqa. That's not wasila. Wasila is giving it to Rasulullah or allowing him to take it so that he can spend it on other people. That's the wasila. Here more details are given, like there's there's new names given, like Toba returning to Allah is the same thing as Taskiyatun Nafs. Returning to Allah is identical to Taskiyatun Nafs. And the other thing is that um, Allah accepting their return is identical to Rasulullah making them whole or giving them salam or sending salawat upon them. So when, when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly, we engage in tazkiyatun nafs, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his metaphysical reality makes us whole. Okay. Um, let's go to the, and in, in this process, obviously, at tawabur rahim is made manifest. Let's go into the last, last ayah, right? So in Surah, uh, Surah at tawbah Ayah 118, I just side note here, Surah Al-Baqarah, the first four ayah of the six are in Surah Al-Baqarah and the last two are in Surah at tawbah and there's no other ones, right? So again, I'm just going to go through the arc, right? Let me just go through the arc. Instead of translating the ayah. So this one, this ayah is again about the Sahaba, but it's about three particular Sahaba. And these Sahaba are the three that left behind at Tabuk. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went with an army of 30,000 to fight the Romans. And, you know, these Sahaba, he called for jihad or qital. And these three Sahaba ended up staying behind. They, stood, they stayed behind and they did not go with him. Right, for various reasons we don't have to talk about now. But when he came back, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had this, he used to hold like a court or something and he used to call the people and be like, why didn't you come? Why didn't you come? And they all used to make excuses, right? And so these three, the munafiqeen used to make excuses, right? Because if you're, you're excusable, like you're old or you don't have money, you don't have horses, you don't have weapons, there's something different, right? But if you have no excuse, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa knows, so he used to call the people and ask them excuses, and all the munafiqeen would give him false excuses. The munafiqeen would give him false excuses, right? But these three sahaba had iman in their hearts, and they knew that they had messed up. You know, and they have stories why they didn't go. It's understandable on a human level, but, uh, you know, it just they got lazy or something happened. But, you know, they knew that they had done wrong. And so they spoke the truth. And they're like, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have no excuse. We have no excuse, right? And so there's this event, the whole of it is mentioned in the Quran. So now let me go through the narrative arc, right? So the three of the Sahaba have committed a major sin. Rasulullah, the Rasul of Allah has called for Qital and they have not gone with him when he left and they, ha they have not fought in the battle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides a wasila for returning to him. Basically what happens is they are given kind of this intermediate period where they're not to be, they're socially ostracized. 
right? They're, they're socially ostracized. Their wives can't interact with them. No one can interact with them, not their family. And it's their matter is left ambiguous, right? The matter is left ambiguous, right? Like it's not clear. Are they going to be punished? Is this going to be a permanent social boycott? Is it eventually going to get worse if they don't voluntarily leave? Are they supposed to stay? This complete no communication, right? Other than the initial Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like, get up, wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given matter about you. And then it gives, give a command about you. And, and you know, you, you're, he commanded the people not to talk to them. And so they're in this kind of ambiguous state. And, you know, back then socialization was even more important. People could not isolate in the same way they do today. So it was it was really difficult to for them to be in this state because they were around the people. There was nowhere to go. You know, it's the middle of the desert. But at the same time, there was no they were ostracized socially. So the three Sahaba adopt the Vasila, meaning they have Iman in their hearts, so they don't leave Medina, they don't go back to Makkah, they don't go join the Mushrikeen and get angry, they don't get angry at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they don't say something bad about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing like that, they just suffer through it, they, they accept that that sacrifice or they accept that Vasila, and that Vasila is always like some sort of sacrifice, it's some sort of atonement, right, that's the Vasila. Um, after 50 nights, Allah returns to them. Allah extends revelation that's okay. You can accept them. Their Tawbah has been accepted. They have made Tawbah. Right? This was their Tawbah. Um, in this process is manifest the compassionate returner. So in this process, At-Tawabur Rahim is made Zahir. So that's the end of the video here. But let me just say some ending notes. Uh, this is At-Tawabur Rahim. There's also... Tawabun uh, Rahimun. That's a different name. That one's mentioned three times in the Quran. And please like and subscribe to this channel and please comment below. I would love feedback. Feedback is very helpful. And also, I'm selling the, the comp like on these videos, I can't go for too long. And so, on my blog, I have like what I've put here in written format. It's easier to digest when you read it sometimes. Um, so you have these two resources where you can read it and write. And then the bigger, more meta-analysis where we have At-Tawabun Rahim, Tawabun Rahim, then one mention of Tawabun, Haki, uh, tawabun Rahimun three times, then Tawabun Hakimun three ta one time, and then At-Tawab uh, one time. So a total Tawab is mentioned 11 times in these four different ways. So that meta-analysis of compare, contrast, clarifying the meaning, all that I'm selling as an ebook on Amazon. And I would really appreciate if you guys could help me out and you know buy that book because I want to be doing this full time. I love learning about the, the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran and sharing it with you guys. That's what I've been wanting to do with my whole life since I was a little kid. And you know, so I really appreciate it if you could just sh share that. And share this video with those you would think is beneficial for. Give me feedback in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.